Then you've uh, got a settled lineup, three weeks around. What's that do for the cohesion of the group and the new players that you're trying to get to work together? Oh, certainly. Uh, certainly helpful. It doesn't doesn't hurt you to keep them together, and um, uh, it means we've been lucky thus far, probably more than anything else, with other than Jed being missing with injury and obviously Sam out of the side still with suspension. So helps us. Since this one steps up, because Melbourne's a like, oh, yeah, we look. We, we as a team don't go to that um, that spot of the competitions better or worse one week to the other. We go to the same spot every week and we prepare for the best of every team. And if the best of every team turns up, you've got to be able to match it, and otherwise you won't get the result you want. You've um, gone through game by game with Melbourne with having some special treatment for Max Storm. Does that continue this time? Do you think you've got a way to find an edge against you? Oh no, no. We we um, we we take our opportunities against every team as best we possibly can, and and try to lessen the strengths of their of their strengths. Which for us, um, Max is a very good player and he's a great player, probably the best ruckman in the competition. So we do our best to limit what he can do to the game, but equally as much as all the other players have got out there, they've got such talent in that side. And and we, I think there's a bit more made of that stuff than that's real. And I, yeah, it'll be what you probably right, but from our point of view, we try and stop Max going as much as we can from influencing a game. Jed straight back into the 22? Yeah, Jed will play. Jed will play. That's the only one I'll give you. Okay. What's, uh, what's so important about his role? Oh, he just, he's very important to us in, in the way he plays. You know, we, With Pep out of the side as well, we, we understand that he's um, a pressure player in our front half who's really important to us. And you know, Darcy's um, soldiered the, a fair bit of it last week on his own with Frank's support. So. Um, you know, all our forwards are required to do that sort of stuff, but Jed, um, in particular, comes in to uh, add a real, real edge to our pressure. Can you take advantage of Melbourne being a bit beat up down pat with no May and, and Lever in a bit of doubt? Well, Lever's playing, so I assume that he's 100% right. May's not playing, but we all have players out of our side that are not not available. Sam Powell Pepper would be equally as important to us as any other player that we've got. Obviously, Tolls hundred for a guy that you've been. Spoke pretty glowingly about in the past. How, how pleased you've been? Yeah, I'm incredibly pleased for him, but it's also just a part of his journey. It's, it's. You know, I've had uh, great confidence, as has all our coaches, in in what Todd's ability was going to be able to uh, allow him to produce at AFL level. He's starting to become the player that we all want him to be, and we still expect that some, in, in some ways, the next hundred will be even better again because that's what we expect of our players. But really proud of you know the challenges that Todd's faced, which. That's why I was always um, very supportive of Todd. Not many people have had to face the challenges he's faced in his career so far. A huge milestone last week in 350 games. Is 100 games for Todd, given what he's been through, almost just as significant when you put it into context? You know, it's funny, I was actually thinking exactly that way coming in this morning, because uh, obviously we talk about those milestone games to the playing group, and, and my role in that is to, is to talk. So I, um, you know, I, I was reflecting on that and going, how, gee, how big was Trav's effort you know, to get to 350, and and when I was sitting there, and I was actually driving in, I'm thinking, gee, I'm not sure he could have many more challenges than Todd's faced, and to be able to achieve 100 games is is remarkable. And, and I probably, and I shouldn't, but I probably do reflect it at being very similar to what Travis's milestone was last week. And Travis had his own story, but because I've been a part of the Todd story so closely, it's um, it, it's been it's been one that I'm really proud of. It's going to be hard, isn't it? I mean, the great midfielders going at each other. I mean, that's, Melbourne's got to be close, I would have thought, to the best group of mids together when you think of what their quality is. And, um, you know, Petrarca and Oliver and Viney and Sparrow and, and Max. And Cosy goes in there to. It's a pretty formidable group that we're up against. And um, you know what I'm looking forward to is the growth of our group and Ollie back in good form, taking on those challenges himself, Avan coming in and helping us. You know, obviously, the, we've got a couple of our vice captain and captain really important to us. Uh, we've still got Jason out of our team. So it's, it's one that we, we look forward to the real challenge, but it's a massive challenge. We forget him, don't we? <laughs> no, we do what we do always with Drew, and that is use him the way we need to at, at whatever time that has to be. And um, you know, last week 
we used him after half time in a different role um, this week. Hopefully, we don't have to use him in in the in the tagging role, if that's the term that everyone wants to call it. Um, hopefully, it doesn't have to have to be the case because normally it's you're in a bit of trouble when you go in that place. Does that resonate with you? So I think what Charlie Dixon made the point that Melbourne, when they've been put into a crisis mode, not just for a week, but for a fair while now, that it's ominous to play a team like that. Does that resonate with you? Um, yeah, I th- well, crisis mode. I, I don't know. I mean, we all have our challenges at different times. Um, Melbourne have been spoken about a lot over the, the summer with some of their challenges, but we all have our challenges. But this game makes it hard to play against them whenever you play against them. You know, if you look at last night's game, Grand finalists both hadn't had a win before last night. Do you, when do you want to play any side in this competition? Probably never, but you have to play them every week. So they're uh, they're a formidable team. They've been a top four team for a long period of time. So that's that's as much as much respect as we need to worry about. Not worry about any other challenges. What's your read on uh, drug testing outside of, of game day? And have you sort of seen the the discussion around it over the last few days? Yeah, well, it's it's an interesting one for me because I I'm a bit more matter of fact. The AFL and the AFLPA have a policy on, on, on the drugs and my, my job is to respect that policy and that's all I do. I work within that policy. I don't have a view that I'm prepared to share either way, personally, around that situation other than to say that I work in this industry and I, I work within the boundaries of that policy. So you're frustrated by the lack of transparency that comes with it? No, I'm saying again, I work within the industry that has a policy in place and I'm happy to, um, at, at this point in time, that I support because uh, I work in it. You seem like a player first coach. Um, is privacy important for players as well in all this? Privacy is always important in life. I think. I think it's, it's, it's your own. Um, it is what it is. It's privacy. So if you've got stuff that is private, it, it, it should remain that way. And we shouldn't we shouldn't dig and scratch and try and find out what is isn't or is going on. We should respect that that word.